it's Carrie, the expat mom here back with another video. Today I'd like to share with you our journey so far in raising children bilingually. Now just as a disclaimer before we get started, I'd like to say this is just an observation with what we have seen in our own child and I am no way a professional. If you have any concerns regarding your own children, please, please, please consult a doctor or a speech therapist. With that being said, I'd like to go ahead and tell you what, how I'm going to go into this discussion. First, I would like to talk to you about what methods we have used in regarding our own children's bilingual upbringing, and I'll continue into how our oldest child has so far developed regarding being a bilingual and not just a monolingual, and then I'll finish out with what the future has in store with us. Now, I'd also like to say that this is not the only video I plan regarding this topic, and I do plan to do further updates in the future, especially once my child gets into preschool. Okay, so let's get started. Regarding our home and home, these are the methods that we have used to subscribe to in raising our children bilingually. First of all, you may have heard of this method, but it's called One Parent, One Language. And this refers to, um, as the title, may give away is that one parent uses one language and the other parent uses another language. In our case, I speak English to our children and my husband speaks German. Now we live in Germany and therefore we have also decided to, as our home language, to also have that as English and when we're out and about we use, of course, German. So you may wonder how this might work. And in a sense, my husband and I, we speak English to each other. We always have. Um, that's the language we get to know each other in. And when we are sitting at the dinner table, for example, I will go and speak to my son in English, and he will speak to him in German. However, when we are all communicating with one another, we do tend to go back to English. When we are out and about, however, my son will see that I speak German to others in our community, and such as doctors, other parents, and so forth. But when I go back and talk to him, specifically um, instructions or directions that he needs to know just for him, I will speak to him in English. However, if it's something that um, is kind of rude, if I were not to include um, the others in our group, I will speak to him in German in that case. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead and talk about how so far, our child has developed his language. As of now, he could be considered a balanced bilingual. Balanced bilingual in the sense he understands both languages at the same level and he has words in both languages for the same thing. So, for example, bread is brought, car is auto, so forth and so on. There are, however, like words that he chooses to use over the others. So he will not say Flugzeug, he will say airplane. On the other hand, he will not say car, but he refers to autos. And he will also talk to me um, using these words as well. However, most of the time, he will speak to me in English and my husband in German. And he has, for the most part, realized with whom he should use which language. So with my parents, he does know that he needs to speak English with them. And sometimes he will catch himself. If he says a German word, he will go and say it in English. Now he is only two and a half, and I know that at some point German could take over, and he might use that more often when speaking with those who just speak English. So besides just single words and talking to certain people with certain languages, I have also noticed language constructions my son has already picked up. So for example, the English progressive, such as I am coming, I am driving, I am reading, so forth and so on, this does not exist in German. However, my son has picked it up and he will not put it into German. Um, he will say, auto coming, or Jonas eating, or um, whatever else he might want to explain. He does use the progressive form in the sense of the child's progressive form. He does not have the Jonas is eating or auto is coming yet. 
Besides the English progressive, he has also taken up the German conversational path. So he does not use the, in the sense he does not use the English ED forms. Now on the other hand, he also does not use the past tense in English as much as he does in German. So for example, he will say uh, kaputt gemacht, something has been broken, kaputt gemacht. Gemacht is often a word that he uses in this term. I wish I could get some of these on video, but oftentimes they are so spontaneous in nature that it's really hard to get it on video. As of now, those are the main observations that I have seen regarding differences in his languages. However, as I said before, he is at this point mainly a balanced bilingual in the sense that his languages are at the same level. Now this, I fear, will definitely change. And, and I mean that in the sense that this year he will be going to preschool. And I have kept him out as long as possible so that I can spend time with him in order to get his English as far advanced as possible before German influences that even more so. And I don't mean that in the sense that, oh no, he will never be able to speak English if he goes into preschool too early. I just mean that I would like to have him as balanced as long as possible. Because I have seen this with other children who have grown up bilingually, that once they get into kindergarten, that because they hear the one language so much more than the other, and in the sense that for me right now, he's at home with me. I speak to him and his brother and we're constantly in conversation with one another that once he goes into kindergarten, he will be away from me for six hours and he will not be listening to any English maybe. And so that will influence his, his use of the language. There's no doubt about it. How much so, I really can't say, but I do plan on taking some care in maintaining his English as long as possible. I do know that because we don't even live in the United States or in the UK or in Australia or anywhere where they speak English in the community really, that he will lose that social aspect of language more so than a child who is growing up in the United States. But uh, what can you do? That's what you have to expect when you have a multicultural child. There are some some areas of a language will just not be there. Now regarding what I plan to do in order to keep his language going once he's in preschool, things I've already done are we read English books, we listen to English music, we watch English cartoon shows or other shows that are in English, we play games, flashcards, puzzles, anything that I can imagine that especially once he gets older that he will be able to focus more on such as games that those things are done with me in English because that will still allow him to have that English input and once his brother starts speaking as well that might be a little bit easier to to have both of them speaking in English and that there will be more than just a few of us communicating in my mother tongue. Besides that we also hope that the preschool that we we have him ready to be enrolled in is that they also have an English hour every week, but that's only once the kids get to be four years old. With that being said, I think that's come down to the end of this bilingual update. I do plan to do more of these in the future, especially once my little, little one starts speaking as well, because then I can also capture how his first language interactions are, which I didn't get so much with my older ones. So if you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. This video, feel free to also subscribe. I do plan on doing more of the types of these videos as well as other videos regarding expat life and raising children abroad. You can also catch me on Instagram and Twitter at expatmommy09 or 09, the number 09. And with that being said, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! I'll see you later. <laughs> no, no, no.